I've been 40 years writing a book. I began it 40 years ago. And since then I have struggled with it. I've written, I've read many other books on the subject. And finally, now that I'm 81, I realize I must write the book before it's too late. And so I've written a book on divorce and remarriage. Because I believe that's become one of the most important issues for the Western Church. It's an issue that has crept into the church from society around us. Forty years ago, it was almost unheard of to know that a Christian marriage had broken up and that the two people had married again. It just didn't occur because people knew what Jesus said about it. Actually, he never said anything about abortion or about homosexuality, and yet Christians are so outspoken on those two issues, but so quiet about divorce and remarriage because it's crept right inside the church. And hopefully those other two things are mainly outside the church, though they too are creeping in. But divorce and remarriage has got right into the church. And in some cases, there are more divorces and remarriages inside church than outside. And even among well-known Christian ministers and evangelists. And so a burden has grown in me. And like most Christians today, I've had to face the pain and anguish of this issue among close relatives and dear friends, Christians. And it's not easy to face when those near to you are involved. So I'm aware that it's a painful and highly emotive issue to raise. And yet the Lord has led me to raise it try and put a foot on the brake pedal to stop what is spreading so rapidly around our churches. So I've gone back to the Bible first. That's my major source of all matters of belief and behavior. And I've studied what God said at the beginning, what Moses said about it. He actually allowed divorce and remarriage. And then I looked at what the prophets have said and then what the scribes were saying in Jesus' day and they were quite divided between one school of scribes who said divorce for adultery only and another school of scribes who said for anything that offends the husband. For in Jewish culture it was the husband who did the divorcing and the remarrying. And then I've looked very carefully at what Jesus said about it. He said quite a lot. He did actually make a rule and then one exception to the rule. And the interpretation of that exception has been a major source of discussion among Christians. And I've joined the discussion and presented what I believe it means. Then I look at Paul and what he taught. And then I've looked at what the church has taught through the ages and, oh, that's just sheer confusion. The church has changed its mind many times. And then I've finally looked at what we should be saying and doing about this amazing invasion of worldly attitudes. The accepted pattern of marriage in society is now what I call, by its real name, consecutive polygamy. You can have as many husbands and wives as you like, as long as you have them one at a time. That's only one step short of simultaneous polygamy, where you can have as many as you like at the same time. God's standards for marriage, which he intended to be between men and women, not between men and men or women and women, which he intended to be lifelong, that standard is rapidly disappearing. But it's God's standard and it's his intention for our happiness and our holiness 
that we should live his way. And this is just one area where the church is seriously departing from his way and really saying, I did it my way. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters will be whether we did it his way or our way.